My cats wake me up each morning, they scream for attention, they demand to be petted in certain ways and at certain times, they control who sits on which pieces of furniture, and of course, they require a lot of cleaning, tidying, and household management as we have recently learned, of course, all for their pursuit of their own comfort and pleasure. And if things aren't just so, well, we find out about it. October 29th is National Cat Day, and to honor this, Molly and Paisley have clearly communicated to me that they would like for me to share the following tips with you on how humans should be taking care of their cats. So for all of you cat owners, lean in because if cats could talk, here's what they tell you in plain English. Please, she says, wash my food and water bowls after each meal. I know a lot of messy people, but I know for sure that even the messiest of ladies and germs will not eat on a dirty dish. Your cat happens to be extremely finicky about cleanliness and a dirty plate or bowl smells and just makes food and water rather unappetizing. I see why am I? A domestic cat has a sense of smell that's 14 times stronger than a human and average over 200 million olfactory receptors. Hello! So aside from smelling rank, dirty dishware can also breed bacteria, which can make kitty sick and make your house smell too. We put ours in the dishwasher or hand wash them before a meal is served. Also, have you ever observed a cat eating? They don't exactly follow the rules of dining engagement and they often spill food. So find a small placemat or a piece of shelf liner that can sit under the food and water bowl and will trap and contain food and water spills. Oh yeah, okay. She says, I'd really like my toys to be clean. Now, I know you've got a lot going on during the day, but do you ever take a moment to stop and think about just how gross your cat's toys are? I seriously do, and it's nasty. They schlep them around in their mouths, and heaven knows where they've been tossed, hidden, or trapped, and how old they are. So, to care for kitty's toys, here's what I recommend. For rubber or plastic toys, soak in a bucket filled with equal parts hot water and vinegar, leave this for 20 minutes, and then rinse and dry each toy. Now if they're a little grimy, you can even stick a cloth in the bucket and scrub them a little bit while they're immersed. For plush toys, place them in the washing machine and use a scent-free detergent. I'd recommend placing them in a delicates bag and using an extremely gentle cycle, because I haven't seen many durable plush cat toys, so just be prepared for what might come. Now, if the toy is stuffed with catnip, you do need to change these out every few months since each time that toy gets wet, it'll add moisture to the catnip, which leads to mold or mildew. Cat trees can be sprinkled with baking soda, vacuumed, and wiped with a damp cloth. If the carpeting needs some real TLC, you can add a small squirt of dish soap to a bucket of warm water and then use a scrub brush to clean those carpeted areas Pat them dry with a clean cloth, and of course continue to do this until all of the suds come out. My bathroom should be fit for a queen. Oh, don't we know. No one fancies a dirty bathroom. When it comes to litter, consider the litter holy trinity. It should be good for cats, people, and the environment. Now what we did, we used to use crystals, but because it wasn't really meeting the mark of that holy trinity, we recently made the switch to Sweet Scoop, which I've talked about before. Basically, it's better for the environment because it's 100% biodegradable, clay-free, and chemical-free. It's better for the kitties because it is clay-free, and you can research the perils of clay litter. And I also see them pawing through it more than they did with the crystals. We like it more because it's easy to scoop and it helps manage odors well. It's actually kind of cool if you can say that about litter. The enzymes in the wheat react to the cat waste and eliminate the odors, and also the fact that wheat is starchy, it causes it to clump well, which has made scooping a lot easier. A couple of litter issues to address really quick. As with all litters, it can fall out of the litter box no matter how hard you try, so what we've done is placed a boot tray under the litter box and stay on top of the sweeping. We scoop the box daily and we change the litter weekly. And finally, locate your litter box far away from where your kitties eat because they have such powerful sniffers, they don't really want to be anywhere near their bathroom while they're about to chow down. And frankly, neither would you. I want to be groomed like all the time. 
There are so many benefits to grooming your cat. It's seriously not even a consideration to forego it. That is assuming that your cat will actually let you groom it. So if he or she does, get your brush and get going. First, grooming your cat is part of keeping them and you clean. We just did a video about how to care for pets and we'll link that one in the description box for you to check out, but it greatly reduces hair that flies around your house and of course ends up landing in your food. It also helps the cats take better care of themselves by not having to ingest all of that cat hair and then of course later on coughing up hairballs that you will have to clean up. Interestingly, grooming also allows you to do a body scan of your cat. I learned this from a vet. So you can look for and feel for anything that shouldn't be there, like a cut, a sore, a spot, fleas, or anything else that seems off. And finally, it's a nice bonding experience. And hearing your kitty purr, I mean, come on, it's right up there beside chocolate cake and an unlimited prepaid credit card. Oh, okay. She says that all cat beds should be as clean as all human beds. Now, of course, if your cat sleeps on a cat bed, then great for you. My cats seem to think that my bed is actually theirs, which can make for some pretty awkward sleep positions. However, if you do have a cat bed or blanket, it does need to be cleaned regularly to help reduce hair and eliminate odors. So this is quite simple to do and it's different for every fabric. So my recommendation is to check the fabric care label and wash according to instructions. Generally, I recommend using a scent-free and a dye-free detergent and to wash on a gentle cycle. So for me, Molly, who's clearly busy cleaning herself, Paisley, who knows where she is, and Chad, who's behind the camera, we want to wish you a very happy National Cat Day. Take good care of your kitties, and they'll be sure to control you for years to come. Do you have a cat? If so, tell me about him or her, and share his name and breed and quirks in the comment box below. I could read about kitties for hours, and also feel free to tag me in a kitty photo on Instagram at Melissa Maker. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you liked this video. Also remember to subscribe, not only to see more cat cameos, but to begin your journey to a cleaner life. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. We want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our friends at Sweet Scoop for teaming up with us on this project. Don't forget to tell me about your kitty cat in the description box below, and Happy National Cat Day. Please give your kitty some extra treats and a scratch right over here.